Welcome to the Inspire and Learn series. We are the Multihull Group, a multi-award winning dealership in Australia, specialising in catamarans. Join us as our expert team teach you all about anchoring, docking, rigging, sail trim, maintenance, and so much more, so you can build confidence in your catamaran handling ability. In this episode, Joe teaches us how to pick up and release a mooring, as well as how to set up a bridle and so much more. Enjoy! Hello and welcome back to another Inspire and Learn episode with the Multihill Group. My name is Joe Fox and today we are on the Lagoon 42. Today um, we've had a lot of requests for this topic, so we're just going to cover it in uh, quite a bit of detail, but it's the approach to and successfully and safely securing the boat to a mooring ball. Uh, we'll talk about bridle situations, how you use mooring lines to help you with that. Um, we'll also cover doing it uh, on your own as a single solo sailor and also the communication involved in this between a uh, helms person at the back here and then someone on the front guiding you into the mooring ball. So you may notice on today's episode that the image quality from our eye in the sky is not to its usual, usual standard. Our current drone is at the drone doctor, so we do have a, a replacement standing in, but we will be back on form before too long. So when you're coming into a mooring field, there are going to be a couple of things you're paying attention to. Number one is obviously the wind. Um, we approach a mooring much like you would when you're anchoring a boat. So we'll approach from downwind, we'll come very slow, very controlled up towards the mooring and then stop just on top or just, just before we get to the mooring. The other thing you're looking for is other boats. Obviously a mooring field like we're in right now uh, can be quite crowded. The gaps, you're driving quite a big catamaran of course. The gaps you're going through might be quite small, so it's about keeping a good lookout. If you've got a crew member on the bow anyway, ready with a boat hook to pick up the mooring, then you can utilise them as your second pair of uh, eyes and ears. The mooring balls are all very different. They vary in size, um, colour, most commonly um, noticeable. Police moorings in general, in Australia anyway, are blue. Um, so it's generally best to avoid them, but the key is look on your chart or your, your chart plotter for public moorings. So this is a mooring that's, that's set in place, serviced regularly um, and is available for public use. The final thing you need to be aware of on the mooring is the weight limit. So it might, may say on it, it may say on the chart, but we're on say a, a 14 tonne vessel at the moment, the Lagoon 42. So we need to make sure that the, uh, the mooring is, is graded correctly for a, a vessel that's at least 14 tonne. If I'm undertaking this operation on my own, uh, before I get too close to the mooring ball, I'm going to want to prepare the foredeck area completely so that when I'm there in position, I can really easily grab the mooring ball. So right now, I'm going to go and get the boat hook ready. Stored very neatly here on the foredeck, set this to maximum length. Okay, so that I know as I'm reaching over the side, you know, I'm touching the water there. I'm not even straining myself. So I get this one ready. I leave it primed and then I'm set on the foredeck to return to the helm and start that approach towards the mooring ball. So the weather conditions will um, vary the way in which you have to drive the boat. Um, I'm going to go for quite a long run up today because we've got about a 15 to 20 knot southerly just wrapping around the headland here. Um, so my initial approach to the mooring ball will be using the, the wheel and the engines in conjunction, okay? Guiding the boat and getting it on track on that perfect approach from downwind. On my approach, I'm looking to have the mooring ball kind of halfway between the center line of the boat and the port hull. That's because I'm on the port side of the boat. If I'm on a catamaran with a helm on the starboard side, I'll be keeping the mooring ball halfway between the stay and the starboard bow. As I get closer, I'm about a boat length off it now, I lock the wheel, I'm making sure it's centered so that the boat tracks in a straight line. I'll then stand up here to give me the best view I can of the boat approaching into the mooring ball. So I approach the mooring using the engines only because at this low speed we're only doing one knot now and we're slowing down all the time. So at this low speed the only way to effectively steer the boat is 
both engines in and out of gear. So I've just lost sight now of the mooring ball. I'm gonna let the boat drift for another meter or so so that I think it's directly underneath that cross beam. I'm then gonna give a little burst of reverse on the engines. What that'll do, that'll just bring me to a stop. Look at the water here to see that the boat is stopped. And now in theory, I've got about maybe 10 to 15 seconds to walk to the front, grab the boat hook and grab the mooring ball as well. So if I'm doing this with the help of a crew member, it's really important to brief them on what you want them to do. They'll obviously be there with the boat hook, ready to grab it, but you need them to communicate the location of the mooring ball because as you get closer, you might lose sight of it, which isn't a problem as long as they're telling you where it is. So my favorite trick is to point to the mooring ball, okay? And you can see where someone's pointing, you can imagine where the mooring ball is. The other important piece of communication for your approach is a countdown. So you, it doesn't matter whether you use feet, meters, inches, whatever you want to use, you just need to have a system for counting down so that you know when to put it into reverse and give it a burst to stop the boat. Now I just use meters for this, so you go five, four, three, two, one, stop the boat. And this is the universal symbol for stop in my books and that person then can reach down and grab the mooring ball. So once I've got the mooring line, this is gonna come up and straight over the cleat here. There may be other lines, like this one, it's on a ball. I'll just pull this in so it's not dangling in the water. If it was longer, the last thing we want is it going anywhere near the props at the back of the boat. Now this setup is, is kind of a temporary setup that we've got here. We've utilized the spare anchor roller here, run the line over that to the cleat on the cross beam. This setup may vary from boat to boat, but generally there is a securing point with a roller somewhere close to the middle of that cross beam at the front. Now this would be fine if we were here for an hour or two for lunch on a, on a day where there's not much wind. Today that 15 knot southerly we've got blowing, there's a little bit too much wind to leave it like this for a period of time. So I then need to rig a bridle, much like a bridle that we use with the anchoring system. Um, but we're gonna rig this in a different way using two mooring lines that will um, put our center of effort much further forward and reduce that swinging on the boat. If the boat does swing, when it's set up like this, it can put quite a lot of strain on that cross beam. So we're best to avoid doing this for too long, rig a nice bridle and then we can sleep peacefully all night. For setting up the bridle, we're gonna use two of the mooring lines that we have on this lagoon. The idea is to rig one from either side on each bow cleat. So the rope will go from this cleat on the port side through the loop in the mooring line, which is further out, would, will be further out the front, and then it'll go back to that cleat. We'll do the same on the other side and that will triangulate the center of effort from both hulls. So I'm gonna take my first mooring line. It has got a bowline in the end, which is great. So I'm thanking the person that last used this boat. I'm then going to rig this through the mooring line before we let go of the mooring line. Because if we let go of the mooring line before it's attached to our bridle setup, then um, we'll have to pick up the mooring again. So I'm going to run my line through in the same way that the mooring line is. Okay, so that it's entering the boat from the same point. I'm gonna go through the loop in the mooring line I'll then pull this lovely clean line through the horrible cruddy mooring ball. Okay, once I've pulled about half of it through, I'll run it back in the same way that I did. Now this looks really messy at the moment, but what you'll see from the drone up above us, as soon as it goes out the front, it'll form, or should form, a really nice bridle. So, the mooring line on the other side is much the same.
Okay, so I've rigged that bridle set up. I'm cleating off this one on the starboard side. Now, in theory, if I rigged it right, I can take this mooring line off this cleat, drop everything out the front, and it'll go out in a nice triangle. So there's normally a bit of weight on it. So you may need to motor forwards a little bit just to take the strain off. But I can now ease this out. So the beauty of setting up like this is that you've got full control from on board the boat and you can lengthen or shorten the bridle depending on your swinging room. So if you're in a tight anchorage or mooring field, um, you might leave that bridle quite short. It'll still do its job, it'll still work effectively, but you can just kind of limit the, the swing radius of the boat. If you know you've got a bit more room and you're happy to let it out a bit further, give yourself maybe a little bit more comfortable night's sleep, um, you can do so just by easing out these lines. You can also adjust it. So I've let this out, I got it pretty good, but it is still just off to starboard on that triangular point. So I know if I, if I ease this out by maybe half a meter to a meter, we'll centralize that triangle and that'll hold the boat beautifully. So the reason we rig the bridle like this is because we, like I said, we have full control from on board the boat. Um, you could look at a system on your boat or whichever boat you're using of utilizing the bridle that's used for the, um, the anchor. The problem is with that is the securing point on the bridle for the anchor does not have the facility to attach to a mooring line. You need a big, big shackle um, which can go around that thick mooring line, which we don't have on this bridle hook here. The other problem with this is that you'll also need to use a retrieval line. So if you use this bridle to a mooring ball, it's great and it'll work really well, but you'll really struggle getting it back. You'll have to reach under and kind of pull the line through. It's not like the anchor where we can just lift up the anchor chain and the bridle comes with it. So if you're using this in any way with a shackle through here onto the mooring ball line, uh, you will need to rig a retrieval line onto whatever you've got here so that you can, when you motor forward, you can pull it in and undo this off the mooring ball. Okay, so now we're all set. We've got our two bridle lines running to the mooring line. We can see the boat sitting really nicely. That triangle is centralized so that I know we're just gonna sit here really comfortably for you know as long as we want. Could be overnight, could be lunch, could be a quick swim, whatever you fancy. So when we come to uh, leave the mooring ball, it's really quite quite an easy operation. It's a case of undoing the line on port, undoing the line on the starboard, and essentially pulling in the line all the way through the mooring ball. It's important not to do this too quickly because sometimes as the line goes through that eye in the mooring ball, the rope can flick and get caught around itself. So we just want to pull it through nice and fast, but not overly aggressively. So I'll demonstrate that now. I've got my engines running and if I was going to get my crew members to do this then I'd obviously be at the helm station but for demonstration purposes we can do one one line before the other we can drop one and the boat will sit okay on the uh, on the remaining starboard line so there's not a massive rush on the first line pull it all in make sure it's out of the water now you can see the boat has swung a little bit. So before we swing around too much, I'm just going to undo this one and pull the mooring line through nice and fast. All the lines are on deck. I'll now head back to the uh, helm station to take control before we hit another boat. So it's really important when you're pulling in those mooring lines, um, the, the bridle lines, to um, make sure that all the line comes in and is safely on deck. The last thing you want is the line dangling over the side, gets caught by the water and just makes its way to the back and into your sail drive. So I made sure they're all really safely on deck. Then I come back, take control of the boat. I'll leave the mooring field before I do anything else, get in some clear water, autopilot on, 
and then I can go up to the foredeck, tidy away the lines, maybe get my deck hose out if that, uh, that mooring line was a bit scabby. So thank you very much for joining us on another Inspire and Learn episode with the Multi-Hull Group. I hope we um, showed you a few tips and tricks to uh, maneuvering your boat onto a mooring ball. If you do have any questions, do write them in the uh, comments section below. And uh, if you're enjoying the series, do um, subscribe, give us a like. It's great to have your positive and constructive feedback. Thank you very much. Join us in the next episode for more inspirational and educational content so that you can feel confident in your catamaran handling ability. We'll see you then.